and even even people that have been sailing, um, you know, a full season as as Jeff has even longer, could, could probably learn a few tricks from uh, you. Just, just trying to <laughs> just trying to standardize um, how you tack. And one of the, I think there's a, a couple of elements with uh, any part of the sailing. One one of the things that we always work on first is footwork. Anytime you're trying to learn a new boat or a new maneuver, whether it's a small dinghy or a large boat, it's really important to get, get your footwork down. And on a, on a big boat, it's, it's more of like placement, like whereas, you know, if you're trying to get 10 guys from one side of the boat to the other, it's important to know how everyone's going to do it. So in the 5-0, I think all the good crewing techniques start with good footwork. It's really hard to, um, I'm going to explain how I go through the motions of tacking and jiving. And, uh, and you may forget some of the elements, but the, 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 the key to making it all work is, is where your feet go um, with each of the maneuvers. And when you, when you get your footwork down, the rest of it will fall. I think the other key um, with dinghy sailing is that you have to be ambidextrous. Meaning that you always talk about doing jobs with your front hand or your back hand. It's never your right or your left. You're always tempted to trim with your dominant hand whether you're right or left-handed. It's really important that you, you have to get away from that um, and always trim with the same hand, meaning your front or your back hand. Um, and that's true whether you're skippering or, or crewing. You know, when you skipper, you're just naturally forced to steer with your back hand and trim with your front hand. As a crew, you can often get away with, you know, using your dominant hand because you only, generally, are doing one thing at a time. But it's important, I feel, to, uh, to develop the comfort to be able to trim with both hands, to be able to hook up with both hands, to be able to... It just makes all the maneuvers more uh, easier um, when you can do things with your... You know, when, you, when you're not sided. Right. Um, so, I'll, I'll talk through the steps of, of, uh, of tacking, and then I'll, I'll try and demonstrate it if we can figure out how to keep the boat upright. Um, the goal in tacking is to is to uh, is to get across the boat in one step, meaning uh, that you're coming into the boat and and getting across without moving both feet. So the key to that is that you have to step in with your front foot first, which seems totally unnatural, um, but it's it's what you have to do. You have to step if you're stepping into the boat with your back foot, that means that your front foot has to land in the same on the same side. It's much more natural to step in with your back foot first, but you have to learn to step in with your front foot. And when you do that, it allows you to then rotate your hips and you make your back foot land across the board. So if I was coming uh, in from attack on this side, um, I would be on the wire here. Let me just grab that wire on that side here. That I would. Uh, the other part of uh, but anyway, what, what what I do is I'll, I'll disregard the hands for the moment, but just talk about the feet. When you step into the boat with your front foot first, okay, I'm, I'm you can see I'm already unhooked. But I step in with my front foot here, and that allows me as I come into the boat. I sort of rotate my hips forward, um, so I'm actually entering the boat with my hips sort of more square to the front of the boat, and that, and you can see also that as I'm coming in, I'm rotating my shoulders down. So this whole motion of coming into the boat with your front foot first just naturally lets your back foot cross, and your hips turn, and, your, and this lets me get my shoulders down, and I end up with my body down in this position as I'm crossing the boat. Now, at some point, I've let the um, old jib sheet go, and I'm coming into the boat and grabbing the new jib sheet, ducking. It's important to grab the new jib sheet right at the block here. Uh, I don't look at this. I just My hand has just learned to just go right onto the cleat here. So you're grabbing it right at the cleat, and you're ducking under the boom and rotating. Now, I've got the new sheet here in my hand, and... <coughs> What I'm trying to key on as I come out of the tack is I'm looking for the hook on the new side. So I want to step across, 
and then I'm grabbing the hook, hopefully before I even reach the tank, such that when I turn onto the tank, I'm, I'm already hooking in, and it's just straight over the side with, uh, with that motion. It's really hard if you cross the boat and sit with a trim and then hook up and then go. Yeah. It just slows down all your motion, and, and what typically happens is the boat starts to heal before you get over the side. But if you come across the boat in this motion where you're... You guys want to say? Hopefully. <laughs> so again, I'm butt cleaning with my backhand, stepping in with my front foot, back foot across, duck, turn, hook right up, and then you're straight over the side. Um, using your motion across the boat. And you can see that uh, the, that motion of when you come, if you, if you look at the hook as you're crossing, I find that once I have it in my hand, I don't have to think about it anymore. Because then as I sit, it's just straight onto my harness and I'm, and I'm right over the side. And what I <coughs> naturally do is, particularly if it's windy, is I'll hook in and then I just kind of slide my hand up the line to keep tension on it until... Yep. Yeah, that's kind of critical. Until, uh, yeah. Yeah, until you step over the side. 